Who in their right mind would want to be named after something that leaves a path of destruction in its wake? Well, it was forecaster and Queenslander Clement Rag. Inclement was his nickname because uh, meteorologists like jokes. He started the practice back in 1877. And when he did, he used things like uh, the Greek alphabet or mythological creatures or even the names of politicians that he didn't like very much. He meant well though. It helped stop confusion when you had more than one system happening at once to give them names. You could tell them apart. Plus, it, it just makes things more fun for the rest of us. Now, when RAG left meteorology in 1902, it just went out of favour. People stopped calling cyclones and storms by name. Fast forward 60 years and the Bureau officially started naming systems. So when a cyclone formed off the WA coast on the 6th of January 1964, it got a name. They named it Bessie. So as more and more cyclones occurred and got female names, people started to get a, a bit annoyed and in fact took to the streets and started protesting. Why should only women's names be uh, associated with so much destruction and havoc? So in 1975, the Australian Science Minister recognised it was International Women's Year and decided, nah, men, you're no longer off the hook. So cyclones started getting both male and female names. And again, the rest of the world thought, what a great idea, and they followed suit, just adding their own little flair. Today, there are five complete lists in alphabetical order, and that's about enough names to cover the next 10 years worth of cyclones. Fancy getting your ex's name on that list? Well, first you have to write a letter, not an email, a letter to the Bureau. And then wait about 50 years or more, because the Bureau has that many requests. Plus, once they get to the end of the list, they just recycle it and go back to the start. That is, unless a cyclone is particularly damaging and dangerous and goes down in history. In that case, the name gets scrapped or retired, to put it more politely. Like Tracy in 1974 or Debbie in 2017. No one wants to hear that Cyclone Tracy's returned. And the Bureau is a little bit more sensitive than that. So what about if a name comes up and it's, say, the Prime Minister or famous TV star, say? Well, in that case, the name gets scrapped and we move on to the next name in the list. And not, not every cyclone that affects Australia uh, is named by us. So anything outside of our area is named by another country, like Cyclone Yazi in 2011. That formed near Fiji and was named by them and then moved over and impacted the Queensland coast. So if that's how a cyclone gets its name, you're probably better off finding another way to get your revenge. Like, maybe world domination.